Hello and welcome to R Factor 2 in VR. Uh, Sebring, first time racing at Sebring, had a bit of practice now, learnt the track. Um, right, let's see how I get on then. Multi class, I'm in a BMW M8. Here we go, Sebring, BMW M8, go. go, 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 god this thing is slow off the line, anyway, Sebring, I've always wanted to race Sebring, apparently this version in our uh, factor 2 is the best version, on your right, side's clear, on the right, so um, I haven't right raced any of the other clear. versions, right so I can't tell you. I have this track on pretty much everything. Let's set a course and a uh, little bumpy. Set a right right. right. course on eye racing, stretch. but right side. never clear. raced it. This is R Factor 2's first laser scan track, apparently, So, and it's the most current. It was from data from March this year, so it's bang up to date. You got a car on your left side. Your left's clear. There are 19 turns on this track. And it's an airfield track, and we all know how I feel about airfield tracks. Air and track temperatures are increasing. Air temperature is now 29. The track temp is now 29 Celsius. And I can say that this definitely falls into the category of an airfield track. It is mega bumpy. Also, it does take a while to learn because there's a lot of service roads that just look like roads and if you're not careful you'll the drive up them. Offerman's in front is now 0.45. Anyway, BMW M8. Seems to be quite a quick car. It's quite nice to handle. Looks good from the outside. Okay, Matt. Don't let this guy distract you. This is the coming up to the main straight. Coming to in third gear, foot to the floor. And we're coming up to turn, well, 19 is super bumpy. Because it really is just one of the runways we're on now. And then we turn onto another one of the runways and just look at the bumpiness of this. Watch your left. You're on the right. Three wide. You are clear on the God. left side. And there. Yep. There we go. Oh. Let's now move around. The, again, the force feedback in this. I'll make sure that was a 2.15.08. Mentioned in the last video I did, uh, which was a five lap sprint at Zandvoort, but the force feedback on this is immense. I am really having to hold tight to this wheel, it is very strong. And with a bumpy track like this, wowzers, you know. Anyway, this is a multi class race. We've got the GTE cars, of which I am one of them. So we've got BMWs, you got a car on your left, um, Corvettes. Still there. Uh, Porsches. Hold your line. Um, there's another one I can't remember. The left side is clear. And we've got the GT3 cars. So we've got the Mercedes, more Corvettes, um, Radical RXCs. There's a whole heap of cars in this race. So in front of me, I've got the green BMW and a white Radical. BMW should be leaving it for dead. But the Radical is a fantastic handling car. So. What it lacks in speed, it makes up for in glue. Oh, bumpy bump. Left. Sorry, buddy. Looks like you've got some minor bodywork damage. Yep, don't sweat it. But this is a fast track. There is no doubt about it. This track is very quick. There's hardly any slow corners. It's very long track, 19 corners remember in total. Left side. And I've also set the time there. accelerated. Right, let's get past these guys. Hold that line. Clear left, left side. 
Okay, so I've done another BMW there. I've got the radical in front. Um, I've set the time acceleration on this, so this should go into darkness before we end. Car on your right. Still there. We are clear on the right. This is 10 laps. This is the tricky first technical part of the track. It starts to open up into a bit of a straight and get into sixth gear. Coming just long curve to the right. The gap in front then is increasing. Slam the brakes on just at the 300 board. Get all the way down to first gear for this little hairpin. There we go. Accelerate out. Again, a little bit twisty. Get it up to the sixth gear again through these rights and lefts. Should hit sixth gear on the next left. That'll do. Then again on the 300 board, anchors on, down the first gear, building up to fifth before another sharp right hander. Knock it down, three gears here. Almost off track there. All the way up now to sixth. Like a double apex left, drop it down to third. Slightly outside, but that's okay. And the third gear corner, which takes us down the main straight. Sebring in Florida, in the US. They have the 12 hours of Sebring here, endless GT races. There is something missing from this track though, and it's above my head now. The bridge. Whether they've repainted it or not, I don't know, but on the bridge, as you go under that bridge, there should be... The lap was a 2.05.90. There should be like a black square painted on the bridge, and it's very useful because you need to get your head under that... As you go under the bridge, your head needs to be under that black square and it shows you you're on the correct line to to get down the uh, start finish straight quickly but I'll keep looking for it and I can't see it on this version then we come again start to power up This is good so far. We haven't had any crashes. Your tyre temperatures are okay. A few times practicing on this track, I've been taken off by the AI. Just giving you a nudge, not conceding a corner when they're trying to come through. A few dive bombs. Baffer Lee, this looks pretty good. I've got to say. Handling is excellent. And the force feedback is absolutely momentous. Okay. Gap to Offerman's behind is now 0.9. The sky is starting to get a little bit darker. Just ever so gently. I don't need to put my lights on yet. The leader has just done a 202.55. The guy it's ahead just is so bumpy, this, this wheel in my hands is... It's like wrestling a bear. Oh, so strong. The lap was a 2.0.5.33. That's your fastest lap. Sector 1 is 1.2 seconds off the pace. Next time we come through, I'm going to point out, because you'll notice that they've got cones for all the turn-ins, all the apexes, and all the track outs but it's the the apex of turn one it's a very very interesting detail of the track because you have this wall on your left but there is a cone there you just got to look for it it's, it's odd 
but it helps you find all your little points. Okay, again it's starting to get a little bit darker. Pretty much at sunset now. You got a car on the left side, clear on the left. Come on, don't make it easy for him. Make him go the long way around. Starting to get back up to six. There's another BMW absolutely flushing my rear view camera, I suppose. Your front tires are cold. Oh, Matt, track limits, come on. Really? There pretty much is no uh, track limit on that corner. You have to swing very wide to to get around it in, in third gear at the right speed. You, you have to clip the inside right. So we're coming back to the start finish straight. So as we get to the end of this straight and we turn to the left, the apex is a traffic cone and it's dangling distance on the top of the railings you'll see it in a second there it is above the zero board so you couldn't put it on the track because you're hugging it so tight so they stuck it above your head but all the other cones are oh, 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 oh. all the other cones are on ground level that, that one is stuck about 12, 15 feet up in the air. Notice it'll be getting darker now. Lights are on under the mobile bridge. I've had my headlights on for a few laps now. And, uh, oh blimey, it is getting dark, isn't it? Your tight temps are looking good. So Offerman's behind is now 0.32. Crikey, that now that is that's not right, surely that time advance. We took all that time to get a bit dark and now it's as if someone's Well look at that. That's um that's really big darkness phasing. Still. No the track, got my lights on, not a problem, but boy that darkness came down quick. I was rather hoping it would come in a bit more gradually. We're doing alright though. Third. Got this BMW breathing over my left shoulder. Just see him in my camera. He's trying to switch to the inside. He's not going to get it. I can just keep defending. Stay to the... Hello. Stay to the inside line. Now something that R Factor 2 has done a couple of times, I've done about the lap was a two zero seven point one six. Hold your line. Got about three or four push, races push, push, and practices and qualifying. We're clear on the left side. And at some points the game the screen is just frozen. Everything has stopped. Uh, all the cars around me have stopped, only for about a second, but time on the clock hasn't stopped. So on some laps I've been bombing around and I've had about two tenths of a second I'm up on my time and then the screen is frozen for half a second and when it unfreezes suddenly I'm three tenths down so um, I'm not quite sure why it's doing that I mean my PC is easily able to render all of this at top speed it's a Titan card so I don't know why occasionally the game just has a bit of a hiccup but it's really not what you want in a racing game What you want is good, a good immersion, basically. And I've got to say, even though the um, All right, Matt. Hold your nerve. Just the keep graphics are a lot better than they used to be, so I'm, I'm fairly happy with the graphical standard now. The sound is a bit, mm, it's okay. Um, the handling is great. The force feedback is fantastic, um, and the immersion is really good. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty glad I've come back to R Factor 2. 
That's quite an old game. Whoa, 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 whoa. Slidey, slidey down there. Come on. Uh, come on, tyres. The momentum of the car, left and right, is excellent. You really do feel the change from the left to the right, and if the car likes it or doesn't like it, if it throws too much weight off and sends you on a bad line. Scoot around here. Through again. This is good. We get good feeling of speed in this game as well. The immersion is good and the feeling of speed is also excellent. It's just that again. Tiny little brief fraction of a second pause. My relatives bar at the bottom. I'm not making any inroads on first or second, but the gap to Offerman's behind is now 0.7. But we do have um, a nice tight race going on behind me, and I'm defending as much as I can. Make sure this other BMW doesn't sneak past me. See if I can hold on to third. I shall definitely do my next um, volume of six cars, one track at Sebring. Don't know which version. I mean, I've got quite a few cars now in R Factor 2. But um, look at the other versions. Again, normally I, I default to iRacing. So that's what I've got the most cars for. And about a month, about a month, we've got um, in a month we've got a set of course of competency only coming out on early access. But to be honest, I won't be playing that for at least four to five weeks after it comes out because they're not they're adding new features every month and they're not doing VR support until the second release. So I won't be playing it until we get the VR support. Two to go. Keep it together. We'll be on the podium. Two laps left. There we go. It feels like I should. It feels like I'm getting too quick through that corner I should be changing up but you don't want to change up there if you've got a very very it tightens to the left I tried it in qualifying and when I changed up it really made the car's balance drag me well off of my line as the radius decreased Offerman's behind is now 0.7. I'm enjoying this, this is good fun. Managed to keep a bit of a distance now between the, me and the BMW behind. Through the double apex, down to third. Go now, unless I do anything really stupid. Oh, unless I do anything really stupid, almost famous last words there. So if you go too wide, just smash straight into the wall. Unless I do anything really stupid, I've definitely got this third place. That was a two okay, zero five point one eight. We'll that lap was a two zero five point one eight. I 
should be up to third, but this left turn is so sharp. I just want to keep the revs up. Down we come. Power up again. It's the strength of this wheel really is making me sort of move my head and shoulders left and right hard. Twenty-two seconds behind second place. But it should hold on to thirds here. it's given me a, a stop and go penalty for a, a track cut but God knows where that is because I'm just pretty much following the, the lines but uh, I've got penalties off because with the penalties on any crashes meant that the safety car came out and it completely killed the race especially with the 10 lapper so we'll listen and see what crew chief says at the end go. So am I still third? Is anything going to happen? Over the line. Good podium finish. Nice one. Third place. No, good. Right, there we go. So, we'll just uh, do a cool down lap. So, past the cone above my head. So, a lot of these roads uh, block concrete very bouncy. You can really see how the car bounces and the wheel is really, really hard to hold. Lots of relayed bits to make them smoother. Flashy lighters, there we go. Just bring it round this hairpin nice and gently. Come back into the pits and quit from there. So that was pretty good. Uh, can't remember where I started from. I think it was 10th or 11th. But um, finished third. Managed to defend the BMW behind me pretty much for the whole race. Okay, pit stop requested. So, um, pretty pleased with that. Lap times are quite good. Lap time to beat was 202, mine was 205. So three seconds off the fastest lap. I've um, put the AI up to 95% now, so they're, they're a lot better than they were at um, Zandvoort. So coming round towards turn 19 for the last time, bumpy 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 bump. So let's just kill the speed down, get it to under 50. Get the limiter on. So let's get back in the pits, kill the engine. Acknowledged. Pit request cancelled. Bring it to a stop and then we are done. Look from a little red flashing box. So thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.